Good afternoon, everybody. Pastor David, good, good, to join, good for you to join us. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you, John. <laughs> Welcome to Unfiltered. Uh, today, Pastor, is, it's something that's still current and going on is uh, the revival again. We, we spoke a little bit of, at uh, Asbury, and um, it seems to be gaining traction. And a lot of people are going and, and experiencing from themselves, and mm -hmm. there's long lines, and even people are posting, this is a true spirit of God, the true movement. And you go, it, it's really too early to tell, but I wanted to get your feedback on, it's been a few days since we've really brought it up, and I think you're going to be mentioning some of this in your Bible study bit, tomorrow. A little bit. Can you give us some uh, updates, or uh, what do you think about this now? Has it been a few days since we brought it up, since Sunday we brought it up in our men's mentoring class? Well, what? this isn't the first time that there's been a report of quote-unquote revival in Asbury Seminary. I mean, back in 1970, there was a, a report of, uh, of a revival that broke out for several days. And so um, this isn't a new thing, and it's not a new thing there in Asbury. Uh, the thing that I find interesting about it, and I'll, I'll mention this in a little more detail, though it's not going to take a large part of the study, it's really at the introduction, uh, really relates to the importance of the Word of God and the, the importance of the Word of God as it pertains to Him reaching people and changing hearts and, and inspiring and invigorating them by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so it's really related to that. So with the Asbury um, incident that's taking place right now, some people are calling revival, um, I, find, I find it interesting. I'm, on the one hand, we already spoke of this, but I'll say it briefly. We, we as believers, and I believe every genuine believer, every genuine evangelical believer, really is asking for the Lord to, to pour out His Spirit, you know. And so, revival is, is going to be the fruit of the power of the Holy Spirit as He moves upon people and as He um, um, brings them to a place of repentance. And it's going to be centered on the Word of God. So when someone is claiming that there is a revival taking place, the first thing we have to do and we should do is to spend some time investigating whether these things are so. There are those who are saying, oh, you're trying to quench the power of the Holy Spirit. You're, you're being critical. And, and that is the typical response of those who don't read their Bible. Mm -hmm. The typical response. Now, I'm not. I'm not saying that they're necessarily um, insincere Christians. I would think that the person who is so quick to say that more than likely has a real desire to see God move. Right. Maybe to the point where they're not using discernment, because they'll say, "Do not despise prophecy." You know, they'll say, "Do not quench the spirit." It's interesting that, that Paul spoke of that to the Thessalonians, and he said that they, they're not to quench the Spirit, they're not to despise prophecy, but he went on to say, but prove all things. Right. And so human emotion being what it is, and the heart of the human being being what we have as a heart, which is prone to, to, to failing to judge or be critical in our analysis of things, uh, if we like it, we accept it, that kind of attitude. Uh, I, I think that it's interesting to see so many who are very quick to say, oh, it's the real deal. I, I don't know how you know whether it's the real deal um, in, in, in a couple of weeks. The real proof of revival is, is the fruit of revival. Like I've mentioned, again, I'll be sharing this about jo Josiah, how that he, he received the kingdom when he was around eight years old. He served as king for the nation for, I think, 31 or 32 years. And, and as the temple was being cleansed, the book of the law, and one commentator said that more than likely it was the book of Deuteronomy, but it is not stated, but the book of the law was found. And then the priest read it and brought it to, to Josiah and read it, and, and it caused him to grieve. And then he... He assembled the people and the priests and all and read this to them. And, and then there was a command that went out for, for them to return to uh, the word of what God has commanded. And then the nation went through a time of, of uh, spiritual life being revitalized. And see, that's, that's what happens. Just because there are numbers of people showing up for something 
doesn't make that a, a genuine revival. I don't know why people don't see that, but they don't because perhaps it's the longing of their hearts to see God move and they want to see God move. Who does it? I do, you do. But the, the idea of traveling to experience something like that, mm -hmm. if you're not experiencing that kind of presence of God in your devotional life, in your prayer life, it isn't something you go to catch. It's not like some kind of revival virus that you go and stand in line for five hours and walk in and sing some Christian songs because the word is not being emphasized mm -hmm. in this revival, quote unquote. And from everything I've read and from firsthand, a firsthand report of an individual who was there pointed out that there'll be scripture quoted perhaps, but what apparently was the catalyst was the teaching out of a passage in the book of Romans chapter 12. And the, and people, the, the, the students just responded to that. They wanted to love and, and, and all of that's good. But if it's not built on the word of God and there's not a discernment amongst those who are, who are uh, celebrating and evangelizing this and if, the quote-unquote pastors who are sending their right. staff there yeah. to experience it. I don't know what they think they're going to do. Put it in a bucket, bring it back, and pour it on the church. It makes no sense to me. So I, on the one hand, we all want revival. And no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be, you know, as the early, uh, early Christians were when Peter was jailed and they had a prayer meeting seeking God to release him. And then Peter shows up at the door and they don't believe it's him. I, I don't want to be that Christian. But I do believe that you test all things, that you, you see whether they line up with what Scripture says, that you make sure that as a, as a believer, you are spiritually mature enough to discern the, uh, the, the wheat from the chaff. Right, right. And so I think it's wise to have a wait and see attitude. I also believe it wise to say, God, fall upon us. And uh, every church ought to see that this perhaps is is, is a work of the Lord. I'm not saying it's not. But if so, Father, we want your spirit right. to move amongst us too. And, you know, that, yeah, that would, be, that would be amazing. And, you know, in, in some ways we see, even with our own fellowship, God doing a good work. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and the word is taught here. My concern, Pastor, is the expertise that is now coming from young people who are now claiming this is a real deal. When I received a video uh, from one of the brothers here at the church, Showing that somebody was there for they were there for five hours, and not once was the word of God even given. There you go. And so my concern with, especially the younger folks that are folks that shows I'm old. Yes, you are. That, <laughs> that are quick to use emotionalism to peg it as a true movement of God, yes. and uh, and that tells me that are they really in their word then, yes. to see the instances where God moved, His Spirit moved when on Pentecost or when Peter was preaching the word of God, we saw the spirit moving. And, uh, and so we see those examples in the Bible, but yet some people are so quick to say, you're just quenching the spirit of God. But you know, here, here you go, uh, a great, a great uh, segue into this scripture. Yeah, the, the Holy Spirit fell upon the 120 waiting in the upper room. They pour it out, speaking in unlearned languages, speaking in tongues, but those who were around began to mock them. And they said, these men are filled with new wine. And what is it that the apostle Peter did? He said, men of Israel, listen. And he said, these men are not drunk as you suppose. But he went on to say, but this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel, who said. So whenever a spiritual event occurs, it needs to have a biblical foundation or else it's suspect. And so the problem mm -hmm. we have is the emotion-laden Christian today, the young expert who Googles spiritual answers without mm -hmm. experiencing times of meditation and seeking God themselves, other than, well, I wonder, and then they type out something, now they're a genius because they read something. You know, that's what's taking place in a lot of places. And I'm not saying everybody, I'm saying that it is. And then I, I have read the comments that are being made and and many of them are just don't quench the spirit and you're a judge and don't be critical and and all of this is just if it's the spirit of the lord then why is the church attacking itself mm. why is the church not not following christ's words when he said 
that you're not to judge according to appearance, but he said you judge a righteous judgment. Jesus told us to do that. From Deuteronomy, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, it speaks concerning, the scriptures give us so much concerning false teachers, false prophets, a false spirit, a false gospel. I'm not saying this is false at all. I'm simply saying you test to see whether it's true. And how do you test it? By how you feel? Yeah. Well, if you're a Mormon, you can say, oh, I have a Holy Ghost burning in my heart. So by my feelings, I know it's true. But is that how Christians are supposed to be, John? No. Are we supposed to judge things by outer appearance? Or are we supposed to pray and seek the Lord, look for Scripture, and then wait on Him to move and, and to make a right judgment? I, I'm telling you, the church is not led by babies. The church is not to be led by spiritually immature who are emotion-laden. And those who are of that sort are more dangerous in the body of Christ than of hell. So a wiser and more mature and a spiritual uh, reaction to this is pray that it is real. Pray that God is moving and pray that should he choose, Lord, fall upon me too. Every church should do that. But when you're putting your staff into a plane, having them stand in line for five hours, they come back and tell you what they think is happening and then they see it's the real deal with no scripture, with no support of any sort. They're just emotion laden like the rest. I don't know, and I'm not knocking it. I'm saying we've been praying for this a lot longer than most people, that God would fall. And then finally, and I know our time is up, but finally, I don't like it being compared to the movement of when the Jesus movement. I don't like that. I don't believe that it's accurate or, or, or even true. There are those who are saying that Pastor Chuck said that it was those who were sparked by the Asbury revival that were the the light there. That's just not true. I never. I was there. I don't remember ever hearing, you know, what's happening here in Asbury Theological Seminary, that we were already seeing God move. And, uh, and so, John, I, I just think that people need to, uh, I don't want them to quench the spirit. I just want them to flow in it properly according to God's word. I'll, I'll stop. One of the, I wish I had more time. Maybe this is something we can visit down the road is, what are the comparisons that you see and comparisons or differences that you see being part of the movement and seeing this from uh, outside perspective? Because when I mean outside, it's not happening here in, in regards to location, but you've seen it from a distance. I'd like to you know, one day check out what those look like and the similarities and the dissimilarities that you see. All I can tell you is this, and we'll close with this, John, because I don't want to hold them any longer. I can say is this, is there was in, in, in the movement of the Holy Spirit, that we experienced. There was, it was centered on the Word of God. There was no emotion at all. There, was, there wasn't a hyper-emotionalism at all. At Calvary Chapel, we'd sit on the carpet and we'd hear a Bible study. We'd worship the Lord in song and we'd tell people about Jesus. So people may have come to try, but normally the people who come to try to do that are people who are spiritually dry because they're just not seeking the Lord in the way that they ought to in the first place. So I want to get ignited by what's going on with you. you. You do not get on fire necessarily just because somebody next to you is. Right. You, you seek the Lord yourself. And Lord, I want that in my life. And so again, you know, oh, I'm just an old man. What do I know? I've only been teaching 49 years, John. <laughs> what do I know, right? I'm a veteran of the Jesus movement, the G, or true revival. But I am go so there's going to be somebody who hasn't been saved for four years who's questioning. Well, I, I, don't, I don't respect that. that. That is just just an immature evaluation. You need to pray through, seek the word, and ask God, move on me. Amen. What's wrong with that? And time will tell. Time will tell. Time and so, will tell. Pastor, thank you so much for sharing that. And thank you guys for tuning in. Just a couple of things. Tomorrow is our Wednesday evening service. You're taking us through the book of Romans. Mm -hmm. uh, invite your friends and family to come join us. It's been so far a rich study and a lot of a lot of scriptures and just great foundation to be built on God's word. Mm -hmm. uh, and then on Saturday, for any of those who serve in any capacity at our church, we have our servant Saturday ministry morning at 9 a.m. in the banquet hall. And so Pastor David likes to invite you guys to come out, who those who serve in our church in any capacity, like to have you join us and uh, Q&A, some worship, and, uh, and we'll see what the Lord does. Amen. Thank you guys for joining us. God bless you.